Life's a game, the world's a stage, and we are merely role players, where theatrical people play role playing games. I'm Matt Boothman, and I'm your compare for this main house production. Here on Merely Role Players, we improvise stories for your entertainment and our own. And we use role-playing games to keep the story going places even we can't see coming. Because as theatrical people, we're all about maximising the drama. This is Act 1 of Vigil, Bad Dog, one of our main house productions. The main house is where we stage ongoing, serial stories, with characters and plots that develop and unfold over several productions. Vigil is the story of the outsiders and weirdos who step up to defend their neighbours from monsters and worse, after the government cuts their town's official team of paranormal investigators. To tell this story, we're playing Monster of the Week, a role-playing game by Michael Sands, published by Evil Hat. Bad Dog is the fourth Vigil production. You don't need to have caught up on the first three to enjoy Bad Dog, but they do share a setting, characters, and some ongoing plot threads. Starting now, we'll release a new act of Bad Dog every other week, and to keep you going through the weeks in between, we'll release backstage episodes that give you a peek behind the scenes. So stay tuned for one of those next week. For now, though, please take your seats in the main house. Tonight's production is about to begin. Vigil, a Merely Role Player's main house production. Bad Dog, Act 1 of 5. Let's meet the players for this main house production, and for the first time on Vigil, everybody is a recurring player. Yay! Exciting! We've heard all four of these uh, be in the Vigil story before, uh, so get ready to welcome some beloved characters back, starting with, hello Josh. Hello Matt, I'm Josh everybody, I play Ginny Greenteeth, the spell slinger. Yeah, so we heard you in Cold Snap. You did? Uh, Vigil Cold Snap, but we've actually heard you, Josh... More recently than that. In First Nova, yep. the galactic sci-fi spacefaring adventure. Yeah, playing everybody's favourite verbose diplomat, Olwyn the Callahan the 16th. That's correct. What a prick. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Continuing around the table, hello Ellie. Hi Matt. Welcome back. Thank you very much. I am Ellie and I'm playing Percy Byron, the Exile. And so we heard last heard Percy way back in Vigil Playtime, mm-hmm. the debut of the Vigil setting. Indeed. Uh, but we've heard you, Ellie, slightly more recently. Yes. In Codename Mosaic Ghost Recall. That's right. Doing an awkward post-mission debrief Zoom chat. Yep. It was as... so petty. <laughs> so <God>. petty. <laughs> Enjoyed it so much. Yeah. Good, thank you. Yep. Uh, I mean, I feel like there's some overlap between uh, Agent Pigeon and Percy Byron, both very punchy. Yes, punchy and a, and a certain sky-high level of, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Uh, next, welcome back, Nat. Hello, I am said Nat. I am playing Gwynedd, the Divine. <laughs> Who last appeared in Vigil Cold Snap. In Cold Snap. Yeah, Although... Yeah. You've heard me all the way through Taurus Trap doing the sound effects. Yes, indeed. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, I love the way that that's framed as if you've done all the noises with your mouth. Yeah. I, I would like to claim credit for that. I am a very talented woman. <laughs> you are. You are. And I've, modest. I've heard that about you. Fantastic. And finally, uh, around this table, we have Alex. Welcome back. Hello. It's me, Alex. I'm playing Graham, um, the summoned. 
Yeah, all the way back from Vigil Playtime again, and that was the last time we heard you. Yeah, yeah, no, no one's asked me back. <laughs> Until now. <laughs> Until now. Until now. Are we all excited to uh, return to Sheridan? Yes. 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 Yeah. For the first time, all of you entering a world that you have already been in once, entering a world with some stuff already established. Mm-hmm. I'm just excited to explore more of the town, see yeah. more things, see what's out there. And I'm geeking out. I get to play with, with uh, Alex and Ellie because, you know, just heard you guys playing in the yeah. season. Haven't played with you, so... I you on the bed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are super cool. <laughs> I think, well, without much further ado then, shall we get ready to play? Yes, please. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's go. Let's raise the curtain. It's getting closer and closer to winter in Sheridan. The nights are growing longer, and a mist forms most nights, rising from the roads and from the green and from the forest. But we begin the story in daylight, as uh, Percy Byron, a woman out of time, uh, is engaging with the structures of the 21st century by looking into some real estate. Yes. How's the house hunt going? Poorly. Percy's got some pretty exacting standards and uh, they're not being met by the available properties in Sheridan. Are those standards (laughs) turret-based? I think she wants a traditional property Mm. and there's a lot of newfangled modern stuff around. Has she inherited her father's gothic taste? Yes, definitely. (laughs) Definitely. Right, so Percy is being uh, led around a new neighbourhood that she's looking in by Toby, uh, an estate agent, who's wearing a uh, pinstripe suit, seems to be talking to his phone as much as he's talking to Percy. Mm -hmm. Uh, Whereabouts Um, is Gwyn? She's there. Percy just now accepts that Gwyn is slightly protective of her. Yeah, she Um, tags along to a lot of stuff, I do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, Just want to make sure that this this place that she's buying is going to be safe from demonic interference. Uh, and I think this is the first time Gwyn's joined one of these uh, house viewings um, and Toby is just trying to sort out. So uh, uh, is it roommates or what's the situation? Oh, I, no, it's, I, I'm not living here. I, I've got a tree set up, a tree house set up. A tree house? Yes. Don't is worry it... yourself with it, Toby. <laughs> well, all right, yes. Um, I'm not sure how... how useful your friend's advice is going to be if uh, that's her experience of property but I've got a I've got a couple of good ones to show you today I'm sure we're going to get there this time I've been taking your advice on board from the previous trips sure Toby I mean we've we've discussed the uh, use of the word good before in relation to uh, your assessment of the quality of properties available so I guess we'll see if you've adjusted it to suit uh, my definition of the word shall we he leads you to a property what's wrong with it it has a toilet in the front garden. <laughs> Surely that's something that is probably an improvement for Percy. She's used to what chamber pot? No, but it's just it's just a toilet. It's not oh, connected yeah. to anything. It's just oh. sitting in the front garden. That's the first thing I notice that's wrong with it. That they're, they're in the middle of doing it up. It'll be it'll be all finished but and, and properly plumbed by the time you moved in. Obviously that would be gone. That's just uh, imagine it. Imagine it how it could be. Imagine it. Okay, but when you say doing, doing it up, do you mean they're putting in lots of mod cons? Yes, well, you know, they've ripped that out and they're going to put a better one in. Mm, better as in newer? Yes. Mm. And what's the connection to the ground like? Uh, in, in, in what sense? Do you have any patches of open earth? Uh, it, this one doesn't have a garden, I'm afraid. Well, that's very disappointing. Yeah, I did. I did a garden is on my list of of must haves, Toby. So we're not off to a great start. It's a very long list of must haves. <laughs> shall we? Shall we take a look at the inside anyway? You can have a little walk around now that we're here. Uh, might as well, I suppose. What's disappointing about the interior? Oh, I think they put a brand new stainless steel mm-hmm. kitchen in. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. All smooth edges and glaring surfaces. Um, they boarded up the fireplace. Oh, <sighs> but why? Oh, yeah, I reckon they've not only like got rid of the fireplace; they've knocked the whole chimney breast out. <sighs> As you're kind of making your assessment, Toby sort of gives up trying to sell the place to you, and just lets you kind of look around, make your own judgment, and is absentmindedly scroll. Well, not absentmindedly; he is very intently scrolling on his phone. Mm-hmm. 
and as you kind of come back to him in the kitchen, you see him watching something on his phone with quite a kind of startled, disturbed expression. But as you come back into the kitchen, he puts it to sleep and puts it back in his pocket and says, anything? Any any thoughts? Nothing good, Toby. There's too many windows, too many places people can get in. Uh, not a problem. I do actually like windows. Thank you for your input though, Gwyn. Um, it's just, it's it's all very modern and hard-edged. There's no garden. They're renovating, which I specifically said to avoid. So, I mean, really, you've shown me the opposite of what I've asked for, Toby. Right, well, maybe we'll have better luck with the next one. I won't hold my breath. As he's leading you down the street towards the next property, there's a kind of a frosty silence, and he tries to break it by saying, have you, uh, have either of you, have you seen this? This is... uh, uh, it's quite strange. It seems like it just happened here last night. Do you want to have a look? And he gets his phone out and he's trying to show you a video on it. Oh, I don't like these small boxes of information. Why are you showing me this? I'm uh, staring at this, trying to work out whether it's been it's been shopped or something. Shopped? Don't, don't worry, just just making conversation. You don't have to look at it. You mean, what do you mean shopped? It's been sold? Uh, doctored. Wait, I, I know that it can... You can communicate with these, but I didn't know that they could heal as well. No. Messed with. Just just look and you'll see what I mean. I can hardly believe it, is what I'm saying, and I'm th- wondering if it must be fake. Well, that's what I thought when I saw one of them for the first time as well, but... No, I don't, I don't mean the... the fu- I, mean, I mean, what's on it? Gwyn and Percy look at each other in confusion <laughs> and then turn to look at the phone. <laughs> Gathering round in the, on this on this cold uh, early winter day, peering down at the phone, and what you see is a, a short video shot vertically, relatively shaky. It shows a nighttime scene. You see a small group of young people in a grassy environment, kind of a very overgrown grassy environment. So there's kind of brambles and weeds and and stuff around. You can see that the whole scene is suffused by a low-lying mist. Suddenly, out of one side of the frame comes running what appears to be a police officer, but they're running on all fours, bounding like an animal. And they run into the group of youths and scatter them. And you see the officer bare his teeth at one youth in particular, who falls over, scrambles back, manages to get up and run out of frame, and the bounding feral officer chases them out of frame. The, the, whoever's filming it tries to follow, but vegetation and shrubbery and weeds get in the way, and they lose the subjects. See what I mean? It's going, it's going around, it seems. I thought you might have seen it. It's, it'll be on, I bet it'll be on the local news later. Where was that? I can't quite tell, can you? Can we? <laughs> would you like to make a roll? Sure. Uh, this would be roll plus sharp to investigate a mystery. All right, then. I can't actually see the, the end. You'll have to read it out. A six. That's bad. No, there's seven total. Seven Good. total on investigate a mystery. I believe you get to ask one question. Okay. Well, I guess my question was where. So yeah. I guess where did it go is the one on the list but yeah i think that's wh- fair enough. where where did this thing occur? where did it take place yeah he lets the video loop again he's just letting it loop on his screen as you're talking so you can keep watching and right at the very end as it pans trying to keep the subject in focus it takes in a section of like wooden construction hoarding that says coming soon abbey links there is a ruined abbey on the outskirts of sheridan Mm -hmm. Um, which the grounds around it have just been left to get overgrown. But quite recently, the site has been labelled for development um, and they're going to basically put in a nine-hole executive golf course that you can go around while looking at the beautiful ruins. And, you know, it's going to put this heritage of Sheridan in a new setting and regenerate that area Mm -hmm. of the outskirts of town and so on. Oh, I know that place. That's the place that Adrienne was moaning about. And and that's what that was last night. Yeah, that's what that's what things are saying. Hmm? Toby, I assume you've brought those wretched printout things, papery 
descriptions of the houses you're going to be showing me today. Yes, right. yes, I've got the packs right here. Great, the packs, that's right. Give me them, and then be on your way. Oh, uh, I, I, I had two more to... Uh, better if I show you them in, in person. You mm. can't really get the, the full sense from the... I think I'll be able to glean from the paperwork as to whether it is at all worth my consideration. And if I believe it to be, I will be back in touch with you. Well, you're, you're, you're the client, I suppose. <laughs> Here you are. Thank you. You can go now, Toby. Thank you. You've been very helpful. He heads off back towards his car. I feel like, like the ultimate awkward would be if you're going the same way. Yes. <laughs> Your cars are parked next you, to each yeah, other you, outside. You tell him to be on his way, and then you're all, and then you just follow him ten paces behind. Yeah, yeah. Talking under our breath. Bloody Toby. I thought that might have been Briar having a bit of a an angry moment, but actually, I I don't think that's their style. No, I don't think it is their style. I think that was more mean rather than mischievous. Quite. We need to look into this. Agreed. Are we far enough away from... I can't fly us from here. Do you have any form of transport? Uh, yes, I have my bicycle. Good. <laughs> Hop on. <laughs> Perfect. Is it a tandem? <laughs> or, or a BMX, so it's got the bars at the back that you can stand on. No! <laughs> Basket in the front? <laughs> yes. Gwyn, it sounds like you need to get, you're going to have to take a lift with Toby. To <laughs> oh no. Ask him to drop you off somewhere. That's right, I'll give you a backy. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll perch. It only needed as soon, until we get out of sight of people and then I can fly. Yeah. Elsewhere, where do we find Ginny and Graham? Within the Rosebriar Forest, not so far from the gift shop and the circle. There is a small glade surrounded by tall leafy trees, small pond and a gentle stream which flows deeper into the forest. Ginny is lying and rocking gently in a hammock which has been strung up between two of the broader trees in the glade. Just the sound of crickets, gentle chirping in the background, fireflies illuminate the space around. It's hazy, picks up blue and purple, strange fey lights cut through the mist and she is looking quite down quite gloomy for Ginny just rather melancholically swaying back and forth on the hammock taking a a toke through a large Gandalf-esque pipe every so often and blowing vapour out above her and Graham Graham is with her not in the hammock but just standing slightly awkwardly to the side (laughs) he's definitely supposed to be there but it very much looks like he maybe shouldn't be there. But he, he is allowed to be there. But he just doesn't really know how to do anything else. And there's not enough room in the hammock to join Ginny. So he just in Graham's usual glamour. Yeah. Which is the kind of like shirt with sleeve garters. Yeah. Smart pressed trousers. Yeah. Uh, cigarette. Mm-hmm. Shiny shoes. Shiny shoes. Just doesn't look, just looks a bit out of place in the forest. Yeah. He look, yeah. He just looks like someone sort of photoshopped him in there (laughs) (laughs) so that's why I'm trying to say it to you Graham my darling it's it just really makes you reevaluate what's going on in this town you know up to this point it's been ghouls and ghasts and and lycanthropes and gremlins and all sorts of things that you know Briar and I have protected this town from for so long and then something bigger something infinitely more terrifying bursts its way into our lives and although we were successful it's left a mark on me just left, leaves you thinking about your place Who's to, what's to stop another giant fey elemental creature coming and, and raising this town to the ground I, I'm not really I'm not really sure have you considered um, perhaps communicating with the fey to, to, to not send another large uh, animated version of, of a season to, to to destroy things oh Graham you are funny you do make me laugh <laughs> no they're, they're all about chaos and about strange right, things and okay. are, are you sure you won't take a talk on this pipe it's very very good it goes uh, no, no, to your head I'm, 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 no, I'm, I'm, I'm okay but thank you very much I'm, I'm quite fine with my, um, with my cigarette and he takes a long drag and blows the smoke up into the air and uh, 
forms a little heart. Huh. And it just hangs there, suspended in the in the mist and illuminated by the, the fireflies. Can it be like a heart, but with some sort of like weird demon runes around it? Oh yeah, there's probably like it. a pentagram in the middle of it. Um, see, I was, I was going to ask whether it's the the symbolic heart or like a, a like a, a, human, a, a human heart shape, anatomy, an anatomical heart. Oh, I hadn't thought of that. Yeah, it probably is. Um, you can probably see like the valves <laughs> yeah. coming off of it, like the aorta and the um, all of them superior vena cava and all the rest of it. Oh, Graham, you're very sweet, but we do have to have the conversation about differences between symbolism and actuality. Right. So that's not... I see. It's kind of disgusting. <laughs> right, OK. <laughs> but thank you. He clicks his fingers and it sort of just... Uh, Ginny's going to take another long drag on this hallucinogenic fey pipe weed. Uh, and then something's going to happen. Ooh. Her eyes are going to roll into the back of her head. She's going to sort of stiffen up ever so slightly, dropping the pipe onto the floor out the side of the hammock. Now, everybody, this is good practice. Remember, when you're tripping, have a buddy (laughs) who stays sober. Mm -hmm. Have a sober friend (laughs) who knows nothing about human (laughs) anatomy. So, visions and strange uh, images and sensations begin flooding Ginny's mind. Uh, I'm going to try and use a new ability. Fortunes. Um, I have ancient prophecies or divination techniques to predict the future. If I roll well enough, I get to see all sorts of futuristic stuff that's going to happen today. Great. Give us the roll and let's see what this looks like. Roll. says roll plus weird, but let's say roll plus weed. (laughs) Ooh. Five plus two is seven. Okay. I'm going to mark a point of luck. (gasps) What? To turn that into a twelve. You are starting this game off crazy. Amazing. All right, so first of all, what does a 12 mean? Uh, So I get to hold three on a list I've got written down here. Uh, And you can spend those throughout this adventure to uh, have already known certain useful things, basically. And also because you've spent luck, the uh, Sorcerer Sorcerer Guild is going to poke their nose into this mystery. Fun! So, yes, visions of the near future do indeed swarm Ginny's mind. We will not know quite yet, as the audience, what those visions show, but we will discover sooner or later. Mm. While Ginny is unconscious, her eyes rolled up in her head, a hallucinogenic pipe weed every so often just leaking out of her nose. Graham, as you're watching over her, you hear the sound of a bicycle coming through the undergrowth. But I feel like at this point, if we're in the woods, if it's super awkward sat on the the bike, like, Gwyn would just be flying at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Gwyn's probably flying above. (laughs) So you hear the sound of a a bicycle making its way through the undergrowth and also the whoosh of wings approaching. I'm going to do, like, a really cool skid to a halt, (laughs) sending, like, leaves and dirt flying. You sure it's not a BMX? I just drive it like it is. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, what's... what's person wearing these days i think she has graduated to jeans Mm -hmm. with um, i would say like a just a plain t-shirt but has an array of cool jackets yes i like it that are often quite tailored Mm -hmm. um and a sort of victorian slightly heeled boot Mm yeah yes hot yeah very hot (laughs) yeah um and but very practical Mm -hmm. And very cool. Nice. And still with a long plait. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and remind us what Gwyn looks like as well. I mean, generally, like, baggy, linen, healing fields sort of clothes. But um, but actually, when I made my Hero Forge mini, she was actually in, like, black jeans, a studded <laughs> belt, and a black shirt. Um, because they didn't have those options at the time, which I also quite liked. That's kind of, like, slightly more modern, not, yeah. like... That yeah. might be what you would have gone for for house hunting, maybe. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Chunky boots, although prefers mm-hmm. open toe sandals, obviously. Yeah. It feels like you go for the sort of like edgier look when you're trying to impress yeah. like Percy yeah. or someone who you think is cool. Yeah. Like linen goth. Linen goth. Mm. Nice. And of course, as Gwyn appears in the clearing, she's also sporting some impressive iridescent black with duck feather wings. Mm-hmm. As these two rock up, Graham is going to look up and be like, "Ah, you're here." Um, Ginny's tripping. I think I think she's okay for the moment. Um, she doesn't 
seem to be displaying any oh, that's outward a, signs oh, that's of strange. discomfort. She says that a lot, to be fair. <laughs> Cameron, put that down. Oh, oh. <laughs> She'll be back in a minute. This is pretty standard mm. for what day is it? Tuesday. Ooh, yeah. Yes. Uh, so, uh, uh, c- can can I can I help at all? Well, do do we do we do we actually want to? Well, I don't know. It depends who else is available, yeah. but it feels like <sighs> Ginny can probably still hear us. Let's let's just let's just explain what we've seen, and then nice judging course. by his reaction, we'll decide whether we need his help or not. Gwen is just eyeing Graham with a reluctance. Yeah, we're both in a sort of <laughs> reluctant to rely on. <laughs> oh, you were the first person we ran into. Great! That's fine! Great. You'll be really helpful. Yeah. So you, you, you look a little bit perturbed. Um, what, 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 what's happened? Toby, the inept estate agent, was... Oh, Toby, he's fascinating. <laughs> well, that's one word for him. He was as usual, paying more attention to his mobile device than he was to his customers, uh, and um, showed us a rather disturbing um, selection of moving images um, that I believe has become available in the public realm and is getting a lot of attention, um, featuring what appears to be uh, a policeman dog um, chasing down some youths. um, But but not not a a dog. I understand sometimes the, the... Police here use actual dogs, but not yes. one of them. Like was... guard dogs. Yes, but not that. No, it, uh, it, it's important. A human... to, it's 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 not a policeman dog. Right. It's a police man dog. It's a it's a it's a police officer who appears to have the physical attributes of some kind of dog like bounding toothy animal. Ah, so in the early sort of... stages of transforming into a werewolf. Yes. Ah. Potentially we're looking at Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, Ginny's going to wake up suddenly and just say, like entropy, it's something something dreadful. Oh hello. Gwen my darling Percy love. What what are you both doing here? We're on our way to the Abbey. What are you going to the Abbey for? Oh not where they're doing that horrible new development, are they? I don't exactly like it, right. but we don't like it in there, do we, Graham? It's a horrible place. I quite like golf. It's uh, it's quite quite good fun. They they hit a small ball very far into a hole. But the historic abbey and the the latent magic in the area is quite important to preserve. No, I'm getting a sense that I should answer yes here, so I'm going to say yes. <laughs> Gwyn, my love, I'm truly really trying to work with him to get him to understand to be a bit more modern and up to date, like Percy and I are. But it's taking a little while to to get into his brain. You've made a lot of uh, strides in terms of um, picking up on social cues, though. I would say not done much about the. Uh... Gwyn just kind of wafts her hands in Graham's general <laughs> direction. But how have you? <laughs> Gwyn, I know you've got an issue with him, but you must start trying to be a little more kind to people. L- ladies, can I, can I just remind you, I, I am still here. Um, <laughs> oh, I can direct my feedback directly to you, if that would be better. I, I believe you should upgrade your wardrobe, for one thing. I, myself, have uh, stepped into the modern world of um, of, of clothing and um, find it to be actually not that terrible a place. I, I just... I, I, qu- I quite like the way I look. I like the way you look too, my darling. Thank you. <laughs> yes, all right. Well, enough of that. Um, so, the, the the issue here seems to be there is some kind of um, malevolent supernatural something affecting the local police force, and we should look into it. And the 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 the, the, the what do we call it? The the, the pictures they sh- on the on the device. The tiny the mo- information the box. The moving pictures. The moving pictures. On the not, tiny information. Was box. it was it on one of those mobular telephones? That's right. Oh, on mobile mobile telephone. telephone. That's yes. right. Yes. 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 Uh, it 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 seemed to be as as Gwynny said uh, located in in the Abbey area, so that's where we were heading. Maybe maybe were we hoping to see the? I'm supposed we were hoping to see the creature there. But have you got? Has anyone here got a mobile telephone? I I, I, I have a walkie talkie. Right, C- Cameron says I can't be trusted with a mobile telephone. I drop it all the mm. time. Mm, yeah, yeah, well, I think I think you should be trusted with a, with a mobile telephone. I've heard about a certain type of mobile telephone, which is almost indestructible. Um, it's apparently not used that often now, but um, I don't think you can see the moving images on it. But but you can play a fascinating game uh, called 
Uh, ooh, what's it called? A lizard? No. Um, no, serpent. Maybe. Serpent? Oh, yes, serpent. <laughs> little, and, and, you, and you press some of those little strange glyphs which appear on the mobile telephone yes. and, and it makes that serpent move in a That's certain That's correct. You can, um, you can influence the direction of said serpent and um, right. it becomes oh. uh, longer and longer the more successful you are. I find if you want to try and uh, divert a serpent, then you should just go and speak to it like we do here in the glade. Absolutely. I agree with you. And can you extract the venom from that serpent? What, on the mobile telephone? Okay, now you say that loud, it sounds ridiculous. Yes, okay, it is silly, isn't it, Gwynny? Honestly, you must try and keep up. But anyway, perhaps if we could focus. I had an awful, awful uh, trip just then, a, a dream. I saw all sorts of strange future events and, and, and occurrences. Something dreadful is coming to Sheridan once more. Well, well but... wait and bring the moon down. All right, lovies. It's me, Matt, your compare, informing you that this is a pet-friendly performance. If your cat, dog, tortoise or other companion animal wants to join you while you enjoy the show, we're only too happy to have them. What other theatre space can say that? Now, if you turn to your programme, you'll see that tickets are now on sale for Lights Out, our spin-off stage show at the London Horror Festival. In the show we'll be improvising the story of the Blackout Four, the victims of an infamous and mysterious tragedy. In the dark, candle-lit theatre, we'll draw tarot cards to find out what the Blackout Four really came up against that night, and whether any of them managed to claw their way to a little hope before all the lights went out. We're performing on Sunday the 24th of October at 8.30pm at the Pleasance Theatre in North London. If you enjoy what we do here, and especially if you're a fan of Vigil, I hope you'll come out in October to support us. We're not asking Les Mis money. Tickets are £12 or £10 concessions, and if you book this week before Friday the 24th of September, you can enter the code EARLYBIRD, all one word, at the checkout for a 10% discount. There's also a special combo double bill discount on offer if you book both Lights Out and The Scare Slam at the same time. The Scare Slam is Blackshaw Theatre Company's annual spooky spoken word showcase. It's like an anthology of short horror stories, but on the stage. It's happening the same day as Lights Out, Sunday the 24th of October, just a bit earlier in the evening at 6.30pm. Pleasance Theatre has a nice bar, and there's a pub downstairs that does pizza, so you can see the scare slam, have a break to refuel, then return to the theatre for lights out. I think we've put something together here that really brings the merely role players magic to the stage. We're going to have you laughing along at the start, then nudge you gradually to the edge of your seat, and have you holding your breath for our tragic demises by the end. All those times, dates, offers, details and links to book tickets are in the programme notes for this episode, as well as all over our social medias. If you want that early bird deal, I suggest you book right now. And, just so the interval isn't all me blowing our own trumpet, I wanted to give a little space to Adam from Snyder's Return to tell you about their podcast. While that's happening, please return to your seats in the main house for Vigil, Bad Dog, Act 1 of 5. Snyder's Return is a tabletop role-playing podcast featuring interviews and a D&D 5e actual play adventure, so you can learn about different game systems and content creation, while also listening to us disrupt everyday life on the Sword Coast. We release episodes every Tuesday and Thursday on your podcasting platform, so come join us as we improvise, adapt, and overcome. Listen, that, that, that thing that's just a sign of things to come. I, I think we need we need to go right. to, to that dreadful place, to the Abbey uh, uh, development site, and see if we can find some sort of clues. Well, yes, that was what we were actually on our way to do when we happened across you two. That's convenient, wasn't it? Well, why don't so, the four of us all go together? Yeah. We've all got our different strengths and weaknesses. 
Uh, you two are very good at striking things down. I'm good at investigating. Yeah, Percy is down with the kids, as we know. She knows what's going on in the modern day. Mm. Have you seen my jeans? Mm. They are fantastic. They're very tight, though, aren't they? They're a little bit too tight on you. Um, right. Um, well, Granny, would you mind just giving me a little, uh, a little, little boost, a uh, little gra- Granny carry again, and uh, and we'll yeah. all meet at the Abbey and have a bit of an investigate. I do feel at some point you do need to get your own form of transport that doesn't have their own agenda. But uh, yes. Bryce seemed perfectly happy ferrying me around. It's okay. Can I ca- maybe maybe not get a lift from you from the way you're looking at me? Uh, can I get on the back of your bike? You may hold onto the back of the bike. I will hold onto the back of the bike. It's very very interesting inflection there. What's should I be inferring something from that, Ginny? Or oh, I don't know, Graham. You'll have plenty of conversation as uh, as we're going along. All right, Winnie, shall we? <laughs> 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 so presumably Graham is holding onto the back of the bike as if yeah. it's water skiing. Yeah. Yeah. Get, get a couple of logs and put them yeah. on the underside of your feet, and you can go. It's Graham. Thing. He he will probably think that that's what he's done, but there's nothing on the bottom of his feet, so yeah. he's just kind of hovering. Yeah, I was going to say like Graham doesn't isn't actually wearing shoes. No, no, so he doesn't actually have friction with the ground. No. Percy on the bicycle with Graham water skiing behind. Gwyn flying low, uh, out of sight, uh, carrying Ginny under her armpits, arrive at the Abbey Lynx construction site. You now see very clearly the hoardings that you saw in the video, which encircle the entire grounds of the ruined Abbey, with a repeating message on them saying, Coming soon, Abbey Lynx nine-hole executive golf course brought to you by Voop Regeneration. There are security cameras on various kind of telegraph poles and lampposts around surveilling the construction site. And there are signs on the lampposts and telegraph poles that say uh, this area is being patrolled and monitored by P&Q security. Uh, You also see some security guards. There are official entrances to the building site. There's like where the hoarding ends and a kind of chain link gate starts. Uh, and that gate has a couple of security guards on it with P&Q logos on their armbands. The the uniforms that they are wearing, is it possible that what we thought might have been a police officer in the video before is actually a security guard, or is it definitely a police officer? Now that you see these uniforms, this is definitely the uniform of the person in the video. Uh, nice work. Cool. Is their strapline mind to P's and Q's? <laughs> Something along those lines, yeah. Mm-hmm. If we just go up to the hoardings on the outside, are we going to get notice? Is it like a, is there like a thoroughfare around the outside of it, or is it? it, it it's kind of uh, busyish. So when Starkey established the Abbey, he said it was on the outskirts of town. Okay. So I think this isn't a residential area. Mm-hmm. This is kind of you know it's out of the way enough that it will be kind of nice and private when they make the golf course. Mm-hmm. So I don't think there's like a lot of people around. I don't think there's people coming and going. You're not on a main road or mm-hmm. anything like that. It's almost like parkland, wasteland kind of area. Sure. Well, Ginny's just got a face of thunder mm-hmm. and she mutters under her breath of redevelopment and gentrification of this old town will ruin everything is what I'm telling you. It's an awful place, this and that amazement park. Both be struck to the ground. Look, that border they've set up goes right through that circle there. Cut across one of those ley lines, I'm sure. They're going to be cutting Straight the power. Um, Ginny's just going to wander over to where the boarding is. I assume like a big canvas banner with the P and Q logo on that. It's just going to mm-hmm. look around, see if anyone's looking. Just going to lay her hand on it, mm-hmm. and a load of moss and mold is just going to start to creep <laughs> up the side, and sort of dampen right at the bottom, and just cover it all, so nice. that you can't see any information. <laughs> of course, the the same information is repeated again and again and mm-hmm. again around yeah. the no, bogger <laughs> kilometres around the border of this site. But well, I've done my part. You'll have to come back to do the rest. I think we've got more important things to do right now. How, how, are, we, how are we going to get into the uh, to the building site? Well, the video, was that, because there were loads of mm-hmm. youths yep. in the video, was that outside the site? From what you can tell from the kind of angle of the video and the kind of the overgrownness, it seemed to have been shot inside the site. Oh, okay. How did they get in? Climbing. Mm. Those youths. Mm. So full of energy. Well, what we could do is we could wait until it gets dark, my loves, and then we could try and sneak in and avoid any of the security cameras, or we could try and bluff our way in, or I could just blow down all the advertising uh, boardings and we, like, rush in like a pack of angry Vikings and take it by force. I mean, 
I, I would say we maybe need to rule out the bluffing our way in possibility. Mm. Um, it strikes me that none of us are very good at talking our way in or out of situations. What makes you say that? I think I'm very, um, very uh, the student and uh, to the point. And uh, anybody who wants to speak to me, they want to speak to me more. And I find that I find that quite an offensive thing to say, Percy. What does we haven't established this yet? What does Ginny look like? Ginny is an elderly lady. Um, I actually thought that she's got a new hairstyle and Ooh. she's going to get it long plaited as well. And I thought that before you reminded me that she has it done, uh, that Percy has it done. <laughs> is it so. is it because she thinks Percy looks cool? Yes. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, hair plaited slightly more um, more uh, flowers and stuff in in her hair, uh, but wearing sort of um, a palette of, of greens, uh, khakis and browns, like like a blouse and then a long skirt mm. with a pair of old person the Birkenstock sandals on mm-hmm. underneath. But she's quite she's quite spry and she's quite she's quite on it for an elderly lady. So what should we do then? I was wondering if I could uh, change my outward appearance to reflect that of the uh, the the the, the sort of security people. That's a good idea. Mm. I wander in and uh, maybe do a little bit of a recce. You could potentially let us in. That also, yes. I assume there's plenty of like doors and stuff that that you can open up to get into the site. It's not just the main there's, site. Entrance. I mean, not plenty, I would say. Not but there's like definitely contractor entrances. Yeah, like two or three around the perimeter, definitely. Well, I mean, we could attempt that, and uh, and if it doesn't go so well, then uh, we could wait until it's dark, and then Gwen, uh, Gwen could fly us in, have a look around. I'd just like to see yeah. footprints or some like um, some remnants of the of the attack that might still be in there. Oh, we definitely need to get in. I, I I agree, though. I probably can't very stealthily look. My usual way would be to fly yeah. up and have a look, but uh, I feel like in the middle of the day, with people about, a bit conspicuous, a little bit. Mm. So no, I think sooner the better. And um, can't believe I'm going to say this, but Graham's idea sounds like the best option. Right. Okay. Well, uh, uh, here, here goes. I take a drag on my cigarette, and um, as I exhale, I'm going to try and use some magic to uh, change my outward appearance to reflect that of the uh, of the security cards rolling on the cursed dice tower. So this is going to go well. All right. Um, uh, right. Uh, roll a plus, plus weird. weird, and I am plus one weird. That is seven. It works, but there's a glitch. You tell me what the glitch is, I will tell you exactly what effect it has. I think shorter duration or mm. it's weakened in some way, like I'm missing, say, like a hat. Or I like something. weakened because I was sort of mm. thinking about anyway asking you, like, how is it subtly off? Yeah, yeah. Because it's Graham. Yeah, because it's Graham. I think uh, it's subtly off uh, because instead of uh, P and Q, it says Q and P. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So I I just wander up yeah. to the to the security gate and just try and walk through. Uh, hang on, hang on. We're still on shift. What are you doing here? Oh no, sorry. I've I, I've I've come to do the. Uh, I've just come to inspect the site. Apparently, there was an issue last night with a, a security breach. You you must be aware of it. Oh yeah, there was. That's why there's two of us on this gate instead of one. Right. Okay. Okay. Well, I've been I've been sent by head office to have a look. Roll manip. Well, you can't roll. I can't. I can't them, manipulate. You're not allowed to so manipulate them because you haven't proven yourself to them. I can't. So <laughs> I can. I can. Uh, what would be the thing I can do? Cool. Cool. Um, yeah. Act under pressure. That act under sense. pressure. Yeah. I yeah, can roll cool. Um, I'm going to use. Oh, tower again. I was going to say, could could any of us help by maybe seeing from a distance mm-hmm. that uh, that Graham is struggling? Mm-hmm. Uh, Gwyn is going to suddenly shout, "Ow!" <laughs> Help! <laughs> I wish you could all see Nat's face because she looks very surprised and confused that that's the noise that came out of her mouth. <laughs> yes, you can do that. Uh, Nat, roll plus cool. Okay. Oh. Oh. oh! That is a 12 on the dice. Oh. That's a 13. Amazing. Like, normally that means you get to add to Alex's roll. Alex yes. can't roll manipulate, so I'm just going to say this, this means that you help him to do the thing he's trying to do. Great. So they, the, the guards hear this strange wail. Uh, one of them looks really scared, like mm. you know he's been disturbed by the events of the previous night, and this is like another thing, and uh, kind of freezes. And the other one, the one who was talking to Graham, who was trying to keep Graham out, puts up a finger to Graham and says, "Wait here," and runs off towards the wail. Mm-hmm. And basically, the scared one is not going to stop you coming in. I, I, I lay a hand on the on the the scared one and say, 
Don't worry, it'll, it'll all be over soon. He shivers. <laughs> of course he bloody does. Um, <laughs> he's just been touched by a tentacle. Um, and then I, I, I wander onto the site. And because I haven't seen the video, I've got no idea what I'm looking for. <laughs> I mean, you've had it described to you, so yeah. you, know, yeah. you know vaguely. Vaguely. Like, you're looking for kind of tracks and evidence of violence okay. and that kind of thing. Blurred. Yeah. Blurred. So yeah, I'm going to, I think... Or no, I'm going to investigate... Be, this would be Investigate a Mystery. Yes. Which is... A plus one. sharp. Which is minus one. We sent exactly the wrong person. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's going to be fine, guys. Don't worry. I can always bring about the apocalypse. Um, that is... Oh. Oh. Eight. Eight. Okay. On Not. Investigate a Mystery, you get to answer, ask one question. One question. What happened here? You find... Uh, a patch of kind of disturbed mm -hmm. vegetation that you are pretty sure is the, the site of this. You find like cigarette butts and some butts of other things you can smoke, things like that, that are evidence of kind of just like youths mm. hanging about, yeah. doing what they do in the evening, chatting, smoking. There's some bottles, bottle tops and that kind of thing. So it seems like there was just some youths hanging and then you find mm. trap. The tracks look like they are of a four-legged, clawed creature running at speed, bounding. The interesting thing is that there are definite marks of claws in the prints, which you've been told that this was just a man mm -hmm. running. And also they're a bit wider apart than you'd expect of a kind of normal adult human male, which you have studied extensively. In All an that... attempt to be a normal adult human male. Yeah. All this study of Mick very much paying off because you can look at these tracks and say, Mick couldn't have made those. Mick ain't that wide. And if you follow those tracks in kind of both directions, one direction at a time, obviously, um, you can find that they start at one of the other site entrances. Right. And there are boot prints which then give way to these clawed running bounding tracks. Okay. And in the direction that the chase led off, uh, you can see evidence that uh, the, the youth being pursued must have scrambled over the fence. Um, you can see kind of uh, scratch marks. You can see uh, some torn bits of clothing still on top mm -hmm. of the fence where they got away. And it seems like the chase stopped there. You can't see any evidence that the pursuer also went over the fence. Right. So what happened here, some youths were having some fun, something clawed and four-legged bounded at them, broke them all up, scattered them everywhere. You can see all of their mm. tracks leading off. Uh, it pursued one of them to the boundary of the mm. site and they got away and it didn't pursue further. Do I see any further tracks leading from that point, like it, the, the tracks of the, the beast like um, meandering off elsewhere? You can then see boot prints leading to the entrance that you came in through. Okay. Oh. So transform and then transform back again. So I'm gonna, um, I, th I think I've done enough sort of, I can't find anything else, I'm gonna I'll wander back out. What did everybody else do about the <laughs> gung-ho guard running towards yeah. your distraction? So I feel like I, Gwyn has, has thrown in this distraction to help without really thinking through what's going to happen. So as she just kind of sits down very heavily and starts holding her ankle <laughs> and starts Peter Griffining like... Ow. <laughs> <laughs> And are Percy and Ginny still there with you as well? I think Ginny's going to make a, make an escape and mm -hmm. try and find a way <laughs> <in> elsewhere. <laughs> oh, right, okay. Follow, follow, following the following the yeah, fence. following the um, the fence, finding another way. Yeah, the side. exactly. Okay. Yeah, because I've, I've she's seen Gwyn yeah. do this before. And and she doesn't need Ginny's <laughs> help. <laughs> Percy and Percy's bike. When Gwyn just popped out this uh, <laughs> yelp, Percy rolled her eyes <laughs> and then threw her bike into the nearest bush and shinned up a tree. <laughs> so every, everyone's just run away and left her. Nice. Yeah, top Percy's line. like, this is a terrible plan. I'm just going to get to a better vantage point and watch everything unfold and probably see if she can see what uh, Graham's doing on the inside of the enclosure okay. from there as well. Yeah, you can see Graham wandering around, bending down, sniffing shrubs, yeah. looking at tracks, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but the... <laughs> The security guard yeah. uh, runs up to Gwyn sitting on the ground. He's drawn a taser. 
No. Um, oh, overkill. He sees you and looks around. What happened? Did something attack you? Where'd it go? Well, no, I just fell over. My stupid human feet fell over this rock because I can't walk properly. That's the thing that happens. You sure nothing weird tripped you up? No, I was having a look around the abbey. There's a big stone there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. He, he holsters his taser. All right. A- anything I can do to help? You really shouldn't be wandering around here. This is You're very close to a private property here. Oh, but it's a heritage site. Surely you were allowed to... You can't come in the development. Well, I wasn't going. I was looking around the abbey. The, ab- the abbey's right in the middle of the site. Well... That's where all the holes are going to go. You seem very concerned that something might be attacking people out here. What, what, what should I be on the lookout for? I, I don't know. Something, something funny happened last night. Some kids were hanging around. Watch out for them. Watch out for children? Yeah. <laughs> As in small people? Like the... But, but yeah, you know, attacked. teenage yobbos and... Oh, teenage, right. They were hanging about in the, in the site last night. There was a fight or something, one of them got hurt. So, just... And you think they'd still be here even if they got into trouble last night? You don't what? think they would have scarped it? Well, I don't know. No, who, who can say what youths are going to do? <laughs> oh my god, who this can guy. say? It's who can say? Can this, say? Is, this is another a classic Matt is the youth. The <laughs> oh man, Matt. <laughs> <You're both. laughs> anyway, you're right. Do you need help walking? Uh, yeah, if you could, um, could you could you help me to to my feet? If you, could? I think I sprained my ankle. And um, if he's going to help, mm-hmm. yeah, I would like to try the trick that didn't work last time and try and put him to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Go for it. This is use magic, uh, right? Yeah. First it fails to succeed. It's going to fail keep... again. Yeah. Try, try Roll again. plus weird. Oh, oh. Not, that is a 13. Oh, Jesus. Does he have mm-hmm. any kind of security camera about his person? Yeah, he's got a body cam. Yeah. I would like to... Um, yeah, so he falls asleep. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna throw him into the bush <laughs> with the bicycle. Not on top of my bike. Next to my bike. Different bush. Different yeah, bush, but yeah. I'm gonna take his. That's our body, body bush. Cam. <laughs> body Always bush. keep your body bush. Keep your body separate bush. from <laughs> separate, close to, but crucially separate from your bike bush. Um, yeah, I'm gonna take his body cam mm-hmm. and dump him in the bush. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you have one body cam. Great. Uh, and then I'm gonna look up at Percy <laughs> up the tree and be like, "Can you do anything with this? What is it?" Well, it's like, it's like the the, the magical uh, screen information box. I think it's got one of those shiny bits on it that captures stuff. Is it a small television? Yes, I think oh, so. I do like the television. Great. We'll um, we'll we'll find we'll connect it to some sort of screen to view it. <laughs> Why are we all I've been old? learning about these things from Mick. <laughs> I have a selection of uh, wires that could help. I've been collecting them. I'm hoping that was not in view of the scared security person. I just, no. just thought of that. No, no. no. He's Good. just, he's still, he's, keep, he's the only one guarding the door now. He's got to stay there. Yeah. So Ginny's going to be doing sneaky granny movements around the perimeter <laughs> of the site, dragging her, so, her hands. So inconspicuous. Yeah. Dragging her hands along all of the <laughs> canvas signs. So there's yeah. just like a trail of mold and <laughs> grime and moss that covers mm-hmm. as much of it as possible. So as you, just as you're doing that and kind of getting up close and personal with yeah. the hoardings, you can also notice that both the site hoardings and the security notices both say a member of Lundor Group. So it's brought to you by Voop Regeneration, a member of Lundor Group. Mm. Monitored and patrolled by P&Q Security, a member of Lundor Group. Mm. Could I try and find, because I mean, we need to get Graham out, don't we? <laughs> um, oh, he's, I, I, Graham's wandered out. Oh, have you just left past the security guard? Mm. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I love the idea Graham's though of Ginny doing... Like, doing a, a security perimeter being like, gotta get him out. And then he's just there. <laughs> By the time you finish the loop, he's like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, do, do we get back round to the smaller entrance where the creature came? I mean, it would take quite a while mm. to go the entire perimeter of the site. Mm. This is like the abbey, its grounds, like enough land to put a nine hole golf course in. So oh, if sure. you're going to okay. go all the way around the I thought maybe there's like a, hours. I thought there was like a front facade and then mm. it sort of runs out. But okay, no, that's fine. No, um, they've, they've hoarded off the whole lot. Okay. And there's nothing that we can see from where we are 
of mm-hmm. claw marks or of anything else. Nothing not outside cool. the site, no. Okay, uh, so Ginny's going to grab Graham and I guess try and uh, reconvene everybody by uh, by Percy's tree. Percy's just comfy up in the fork of the tree now. <laughs> I was going to say, is Percy still up there? Or... Are you yeah. stuck? <laughs> of course I'm not stuck. <laughs> It, it's all right, Percy. You can you can stay up there if you want to. I like trees as well. <laughs> so, what, what what did you what did you what did you find out from? Hang on, is, what, what, why is there a body just there in that bush? What happened here? I I found a thing. Oh, what's that? Well, I believe much like the. It's a small television. Oh, a little television. I like the television. I do. I was wondering if it might show anything else. Oh. Although thinking about it, didn't the security guard say that he'd only just started the shift? Mm. Yeah. So it's probably useless. I, I, <laughs> unless I, they I, unless they don't have in their own. Oh, maybe shared. they sh- maybe I it's mean, a shared we, we, we can certainly item. Share. Absolutely, yeah. It's possible. Do you want me to go back and ask the, the gentleman for his, the one on the door? Do you think he just handed can? over? I don't know. I, I don't think that's a good idea, Graham. I've told you people find you a little unsettling mm. uh, at times, mm. so I think we'll we'll deal with with just the one oh, uh, okay. uh, tiny television. Oh, that's good, cool. Graham. Tell us what, what what did you find? Well, um, the, very interesting. Um, found a set of tracks where they started as human, then they went to on, on two legs, and then then it was clawed on four legs, but quite large, and then when the sort of the chase ended, of of one of the 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 younger individuals, um, like you said from the video, it goes back to to, to just normal shoes again. Um, Were so there any signs of anyone being hurt? Any blood well, the, torn the, clothes? Well, the chase the, the chase stopped. There was certainly torn clothes, but no um, amount of uh, blood, viscera, or gore. So I don't, I don't think anyone was too badly harmed. Hmm. And, and, and from the video that we saw, supposedly mm. this attack happened at night. Yes. Hmm. Is it a full moon? Is it as basic as a werewolf? Uh, has, has there been a full moon recently? It's not a full moon currently, no. Uh, there hasn't been one. I think the last full moon was probably a week and a half ago. And, and anyway, it, it changed from man to whatever it was to man again very quickly. So and, had some sort of control over its its um, shape-shifting ability, whatever that was. And left no shred of clothing or, or other no, identification. No. That's very strange, so my the, darling. the boots turned into clawed foot. Yes, from the from the the, the 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 prints that I saw. Is this mo of a creature something that Percy might have encountered before? Could well be. Do you want to roll investigate mystery? Yes, and I see do. If it's just something that you just happen to know. Yep. Go for it. Roll plus so, sharp. Sharp, which for me is plus one. Great, 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 great. Percy forgets who she is. <laughs> Falls out of the tree. <laughs> Every time I'm trying to do this, it goes very badly. <laughs> That's a fail, presumably. Yeah. Even with your bonus. Uh, so, mark experience. Mm. As Percy is racking her brains up the tree, you all hear, "You lot, what have you, what have you done with Scott? Who?" There is a shaking, very scared-looking P and Q security guard wielding a taser, standing just a little way away from the four of you. as Gwyneth, Alexander Pankhurst as Graham, Josh Yard as Ginny Greenteeth, and Ellie Pitkin as Persephone Byron. Sound design for this production is by Natalie Winter, and the theme music is by Alexander Pankhurst. I'm Matt Boothman, and I play the supporting cast, as well as editing and producing the episode. We were playing Monster of the Week, a role-playing game by Michael Sands, published by Evil Hat Productions. You can find Monster of the Week at genericgames.co.nz. Merely Roleplayers is a Foggy Outline production in association with Blackshaw Theatre Company. Until next time, if drama be the food of life, play on.
Jenny Love, Percy, darling, what are you doing here? You're Ginny. <laughs> Shit! 